Hi, welcome to another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. I'm Danielle, and today we'll be talking with Mr. Terry Simpson, the director of the Harrison Sims Museum. Thanks for taking time out of your day to talk with us, Terry. You're welcome. So tell me about the actual building that we're in right now. Okay, this building was built in 1866, uh, right after the Civil War, and for the most part built by Civil War veterans. And they used the building as a meeting place, uh, but it was also used by the community. And uh, it's been known as the Town Hall, and, mm -hmm. and, uh, or now the Miami Township Hall, but it's always been a true town hall through the years uh, for uh, community organizations to meet and all kinds of different events were held here. And, uh, but as far as the, uh, uh, the Civil War veterans, uh, they began what was called the Grand Army of the Republic uh, uh, unit here um, in the 1880s. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but they had met here through, through the prior years. And it was named after Charles S. Hayes, who was a, a major in the Civil War. He was from Elizabethtown, and the, uh, he was killed in, in the battle uh, there in, during the Civil War, and so that's why it was named after him uh, in the Charles S. Hayes post. So. so can you tell me about some of the different artifacts that one might see as they actually walk through what is now the museum? Sure. Uh, the museum is in this room we're sitting in now, and then there's a smaller room to, to our right. Uh, but we are kind of uh, two, two parts to the museum. One is local history, mm -hmm. and the other is William Henry Harrison, Benjamin Harrison, John Cleve Sims, so it's Harrison's and Sims family uh, information and artifacts. Uh, but we're trying to please two crowds. Uh, we have the visitors who come from uh, Harrison's tomb come down, and they're usually from out of town. Uh, they may not be as interested in the local artifacts in the local history, but they're interested in, in the Harrisons and the Sims families, but uh, a lot of our visitors are local and they like to see some of the old uh, memorabilia and artifacts from, from their past. So you're going to see that, that mix, and, and we, but we do try and uh, bring to folks some of the events that from the past that they may not be aware of or they've forgotten about they've heard about and try and clarify the, the, the events and how they happen. So we try and teach also, uh, as well as just have people come in and look around. Now I understand that there was a sword in the other room that was a part of a larger display. Can you tell us a little bit of information right. about that? Yeah, the, the display was in the uh, Hamilton County Courthouse. It mm -hmm. was in, in, in the early 20, 1920s, it was donated to Hamilton County Probate Court. And it was a, a collection of uh, several items. One, a large portrait of John Cleve Sims, painted by um, a fairly famous artist, uh, last name was Peel. And um, a couple um, items, a, a land uh, grant receipt. Um, there was also uh, the sword that we mentioned in the sheath that the sword went in. Uh, those were on display for uh, until 1974 at the courthouse. Mm -hmm. And then they were removed to the Cincinnati Historical Society's uh, storage area, which was in the basement of the uh, art museum in Eden Park. Mm -hmm. And around 1979, the sword was stolen. Hmm. And um, in 1999, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, that collection, all the remaining items were donated to the Harrison Sims Foundation mm -hmm. and to be placed here in the in the museum. And it would so. be wonderful if the sword was replaced to make the well, display whole again, right. right? That sword originally was owned by John Cleve Sims mm -hmm. and passed down through family members. Mm -hmm. So uh, the third owner of that sword was William Henry Harrison. Okay. It's believed that sword went to battle at the Battle of Tippecanoe and the wow. Battle of Thames. Mm -hmm. So um, it's quite a historic artifact right. uh, in, in American history, not just our history, but American history. Right. Um, unfortunately, you know, someone has it. Um, if they would like to <laughs> return that, no <laughs> questions asked. Uh, you know, we would 
we would be grateful to have that uh, item back and, and return it to a, you know, its rightful place uh, here at the Certainly. museum. And the artifacts that are here are either donated or they are on loan, correct? Correct. Um, some folks, uh, they have an item that they think we might be interested in. They mm -hmm. don't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. They, they want to get it out of the house or, or they're afraid that when they pass on, their kids are just going to throw things away. Right. You know? And we, we will take just about anything, you know, okay. if it's significant to this area. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I should point out that as far as the local history, mm -hmm. we try and cover Addiston, yeah. North Bend, mm -hmm. Cleves, okay. Hooven, Elizabethtown, mm -hmm. uh, Miami ta Township, mm -hmm. including Miami Heights, and, mm -hmm. and on out to Grandview, or what's known as Frogtown now. Mm -hmm. So that area uh, is what we encompass and um, you know it's it's difficult not to include all those different communities because we're so connected to one another mm -hmm. so uh, so you can come in here if you're from Elizabethtown and you'll see some Elizabethtown items and you'll see history mm -hmm. on Elizabethtown the same with all the rest of the communities so if someone from one of those areas wanted to donate something what would be the process uh, the best thing to do is uh, we have a web page. Mm -hmm. uh, What's the website? www.hsmfmuseum.org. Okay. Okay. Uh, our phone number's there. Mm -hmm. and, um, they can contact us that way. We're always here on Saturday mornings from mm -hmm. 9 to noon. Mm -hmm. And then uh, usually on Sunday afternoons, we have volunteers. We'll open mm -hmm. from 1 to 4. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are several ways they can go about doing that. but. Mm -hmm. uh, as we mentioned, it was a GAR hall, but mm -hmm. in addition to that, you know, I talked about how it was a, a true town hall, a community building. Mm -hmm. And uh, in 1930, they, they added on to the, to the back of the building. Right. Added uh, upstairs the auditorium, uh, the stage up there. Mm -hmm. And you, every event you can think of has been held upstairs probably mm -hmm. and, and downstairs. But mm -hmm. uh, th the rooms where the museum is now, from 1930 until like 1964, mm -hmm. w this was the library mm. here. So, um, in fact, it used to say library over the door where it does say museum now. Mm -hmm. um, so that was going on here, but but through the years, upstairs there were there were boxing matches, bingo. Wow. They showed movies, musical performances, dances. Uh, it just goes on and on. I remember mm -hmm. as a young boy going to bingo upstairs. Mm -hmm. Okay, this map was built by the uh, industrial arts class at Taylor High School, 1947 and 1948. And what they did was they wrote to the uh, each state's Department of Con Conservation and asked for uh, a piece of wood from each state, a native wood. And so it took a while to get uh, all the pieces back, but in 1948 they were able to cut all the pieces into the shapes of the states and put them all together. And uh, so this is uh, on display in the upstairs of the museum uh, for any visitors who would like to come and see it. Anybody that maybe had a part in creating this map, welcome to come and we'll bring you upstairs and uh, take a look at it. back room it it still is rented uh, for uh, parties mm -hmm. bridal showers and mm -hmm. birthday parties things like that and you can contact the township to uh, get that information on on the hall rental so even today there are still groups that have their meetings in the back room mm -hmm. uh, right now the uh, Taylor alumni choir mm -hmm. practices in downstairs and the dancers practice upstairs mm -hmm. so the building is is still well used uh, to this day, and uh, it, it's really still a benefit to the community. Yeah, so. mm -hmm. it's been here for plenty of years, and it doesn't look like it's going no, anywhere anytime it's, soon. It, it's a That's very great. Yeah, very solid building. The township keeps it up. They've done some uh, recently done some work, and uh, the the back room, the banquet room, has been remodeled in the last three or four years. Okay, it's really nice. So yeah, this is a great building. It's beautiful outside yes, too. Yes, it is. It's really mm -hmm. nice. Thanks so much for tuning in to this edition of History in Your Own Backyard. Today we talked with Terry Simpson, the director of the Harrison Sims Museum. We hope you enjoyed learning all about it. Remember, travel slowly and stop often. We'll see you next time.